Hey everybody, it's Ziz here, and today we are looking at Bless Online, a new MMO that's going to be available here in the West starting in May on Steam. And this game has a ton to offer. PvE, PvP, big battles, world bosses, and it's even buy to play. That's right, no monthly sub. We got a ton of stuff to look at, and we're going to try to figure out if this is a game you want to pass on, or maybe if you want to play it. Let's take a look. Now, first up, we're gonna take a look at the character customization. This is where most people start the game, and there's two different factions that you can pick from. Um, the races are basically mirrored. You have humans, you have elves, you have a beast race, and then there's also a secondary neutral race that's also kind of a beast race, but they're smaller, and there's no racial bonuses or anything like that. So you get to just make your character look however you want, and there are a ton of crazy options. I think this is a great way to start the game with some really in-depth, uh, detailed, character creation and customization options. Next up is something that I am really actually excited for, and I know a lot of people don't care, but that is the music in game. Um, and I don't turn it off because I love music, and I was even more excited when I found out that the composer for like the main score in this, in this game is Hans Zimmer. If you don't know who he is, he did the Dark Knight trilogy, he did Interstellar and um, Inception, and he, he is my favorite composer for for movies and when i saw that he did a song in my favorite hobby gaming mmos when you put those two together i was like nerding out a little bit so for me this is actually something that i think is really awesome and i hope you guys leave the music on at least a little bit to appreciate some of this awesome stuff that we get now once you get in game you will notice right away there are a ton of diverse and just really beautiful graphics and different um environments that you get to travel through and even though this game is a little bit older it's been out in the east for a while it still is one of the best looking MMOs that you're gonna find, uh, which is really great. I know some people say, oh, well, they don't care about graphics, it's all about gameplay. And gameplay is, of course, the most important, but it's also nice to be able to see some amazing, beautiful fantasy fantasy worlds that you wouldn't ever uh, experience in real life. And so when it gets to look great and hopefully play great as well, well, that's not a bad thing. Now, something that is gonna be changing a little bit from all the other previous versions that we've seen from Japan and Korea and Russia is the combat. They've actually said that they are trying to change it and update it and uh, make it different for this Steam release starting in May. Now, we don't have a ton of details yet. They haven't shown any videos of what it's gonna be, so I wouldn't expect a totally different crazy combat system, but hopefully something a little more fluid, maybe more fast paced. I don't expect it to be totally different like Black Desert or something, but what we've seen so far, even some of the older versions like in Japan, to me, that combat looks pretty good. So if they're improving on that and making it even better, I'm super excited for that. And there's lots of different options. Of course, you got casters, you got rangers, you got tanks, you got um, berserkers who have tons of like AOE and stuff. So it looks like there's a good diversity for the type of combat you wanna play. And it could be even better than what we've seen so far. Now, of course, it's not all just hack and slash, but there are some quests and storyline as well. And one thing I'm kind of tired of doing is reading a wall of text in game to get the store and the lore. If I want to read a great story, I will read a book, right? I'll read uh, The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson, right? Or The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. There, there's some great books out there. If I want a story, I will go read those. And in a video game, there can be some great stories, but I love it even more when they when you get to partake in the story and not just read it, or when they show you, like we see here in Bless Online, some amazing cinematics. It looks like all the starting areas for all the different races have some great playthrough stuff, um, and the story should hopefully bring you into the game, help you know what's going on in the world, get you more rooted and, and attached to your faction so you wanna fight for your side. Now, one of the coolest things I think in this game is going to be the taming and collection system for pets and mounts. Um, and that's mo most everything, almost everything in the game you can collect, either as a pet or a mount, and you can ride it, you can fly on it. There's even an upgrade system where you can like collect a whole bunch of, maybe a whole bunch of horses, and then you can combine those together to level it up and craft uh, a better horse. And then you can even go to like a, you know, a mythical horse with flames and this sort of stuff, right? So there's a progression to it as well, which looks really interesting. It kind of combines multiple systems where some games have like a collection system, but it's kind of pointless. List. Like, like it doesn't do anything for you it's just like kind of getting stuff off a checklist right and then there's also mounts in other games and then there's exploration so this kind of combines all that together where you need to explore you need to find these different you know animals and stuff you need to tame them you kind of collect all of them and you can use them as a mount 
um, which is really great. It puts all that stuff together, encourages you to go expand and, and explore the world uh, and hopefully get the sweetest looking mount you can. Maybe fly on a dragon or all sorts of crazy stuff. I can't wait to see what kind of options there are. Now, while you're out and about looking for those awesome mounts, there are also world bosses. And as far as I know, there's three of them. There's like a giant dragon, a couple other ones. And I really love world bosses. They're not instanced at all. That means groups and guilds can come upon them. You can fight over them. I would imagine there should hopefully be some pretty awesome loot. But even if there's not, I just love these giant monsters. It looks like they do a ton of damage, right? It's not something that's easy to zerg. Hopefully they wipe out tons of people. Um, and these are some of my my favorite pve encounters are these giant like world bosses that are in the open world now there are also dungeons you can do while you're leveling up um there's potentially some raids as well and of course there's quests the whole time you're leveling up as well but these world bosses are maybe my favorite part of pve that i've seen in this game so far now maybe my favorite aspect of this game which i know might turn a lot of people off is gonna be the world pvp that's right this game has open world PVP where you can fight the other faction. There's two factions, so half the people you see will be friendly and on your side, but the other half could kill you basically any time they want. But that means you can fight back and kill them as well. You don't lose any of your items. There's not item drop, but killing other players does give you a ton of experience from what I've heard. So while you're leveling up, starting at level 30, you can start attack. You start questing in zones with the opposing faction. You can start attacking, killing them, um, you know, maybe they're trying to take your dungeon or take uh, the spot where you're grinding or your quest area. You can fight back, you can kill them and get a ton of experience, almost the same as like killing a boss. So I think that's really fun. When we talk about world bosses and these big encounters, those are also hubs of activity, possibly for PVP as well. Um, and having that dynamic, like you never know what's gonna happen. Is someone gonna jump you from behind? Or I find that really fun, but I know a lot of people don't. So I'm curious to know what you think down in the comments. Is that something good or bad? Now, not only is it open world PVP, but they do have some other options as well. There is dueling 1v1, there is arenas, I believe it's 3v3 and maybe a 15 versus 15 option, but they also have some massive PVP as well. I'm sure in world PVP, we'll see tons of big guilds and groups fight each other, but there is also a 100 versus 100 battleground that's open twice a day. So that's a huge battle that you can get take part in if you like that big, uh, PVP style action. There's also a, um, your capital city. Uh, there's like a war for that who controls it. So this isn't going to be against the opposing faction, but I believe it's against your own faction from all the guilds. They get to fight over who controls the capital city. There's also some different territory control and guild versus guild stuff. It's kind of hard to figure out all the stuff that is in this game because it's in other languages, but it looks like there's a ton of options for PVP. I know one thing that a lot of people will love is the fact that this game is buy to play, which means you pay for the box price, whatever that is, you download the game and then you get to play and you don't have to pay anything else after that. Sort of like Guild Wars 2, where you buy the game and you get to play. There's no monthly sub, um, but there is a cash shop, which I wanna talk about really quickly because they've said in the cash shop, it won't be pay to win, is what they've said, but they also said there's going to be boosts as well. We don't know exactly what kind of boosts. I imagine maybe experience boosts, maybe a crafting boost is the kind of things that you've seen in other games. Um, but if it gives any sort of combat buff, right? If you do more damage, if you move faster, if you resurrect faster, like any of this sort of stuff, obviously people aren't gonna like that. And it could be potentially considered pay to win. So we'll have to see what they put in there and how far they go. Another really big thing that's gonna be available is uh, like a potion that makes you immune to PVP. Now this is available while you're leveling up. The whole time you're leveling up, you can buy this potion. Uh, it seems like it's pretty cheap from vendors and stuff where it makes you immune for like 10 or 15 minutes and you can use it every hour. So if you're getting ganked or you need to get like past the blockade, you can use that. And I'm not sure how I feel about that. During the leveling up process, I guess it's okay. But supposedly at max level, the only way to get these potions is in the cash shop. And so I don't know what kind of shenanigans we're gonna see there, if there's a way to abuse that or not. It's definitely different and it's kind of on the edge of, I don't know how I feel potentially bad, but there is no monthly sub, which I know a lot of people really, really love. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about here is the fact that this game is air quote finished. Now I say air quote because as an MMO, 
these games are never really finished. But when you compare it to other early access games, which basically say we're not even close to finished, but it's in a playable state, this game is much, much, much further in development than what you would consider finished, in my opinion, right? It's already been out, released in the East for a long time. It's got raids, it's got dungeons, it's got, you know, bosses, it's got PvP, it's got arenas, it's got a ton of characters and classes, and right? So you would say it's a finished game. Now, there are parts of it that we're not going to get yet. There's a couple classes like the Assassin and the Mystic, they said they're holding back because they're not done um, balancing those and working the combat on those yet. I believe there's also some raids that we may not see. I think they're 10 player raids and the level cap I think goes from like 45 to 50. Again, I apologize, I don't have the exact specifics. Compared to all these other games that are in early access that are just barely playable, it's sad to say, but <laughs> it's surprising that we get a finished game to actually play. So to recap, is this game a pass or worth playing? Well, I'll just tell you in my opinion, I'm probably gonna try it out and play it for a little while. I don't think this is a long-term game that I'm probably gonna spend years playing or maybe not even months, but let's be honest, there's not a ton of MMOs out right now. And this has a lot of awesome features that I'm really looking forward to. I love the fact that this game is PVP focused. I love that. I know some people may not want to do that, but the fact that you can attack people all the time when you're out in the world, there's duels and arenas and battlegrounds and castle sieges, there's uh, dungeons and world bosses, right? There's crafting, there's a great character creation. There's a lot of stuff in this game that definitely makes me want to try it. And there are a few things I don't like. I don't like the cash shop. I don't like the idea of, you know, boosts and bonuses and things like that. Um, it's unfortunate we're not gonna get all the classes right now, but hopefully those will be pretty soon. But overall, for me, I'm saying this is a play. I just don't know for how long, but let me know what you think down below. Let me know, is this a game that you think you're gonna pass on and wait for something else? Or is this something you're gonna try out and play? To see my most recent video, click there on the left. Another one you might like is on the right. To subscribe, click the button in the middle. And if you don't want to miss any of my videos, click that notification bell on the right. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.